In Proxmox, we can create virtual machines using this Create VM button, and then we can create LXC containers or Linux containers using that Create CT button in the top right corner. But uh, what that LXC container really is? I mean, what does it do exactly in the background? Or how does creating LXC container compare to creating virtual machine? If you ever created LXC container in Proxmox, did you notice that you do not have to install anything? We kind of just run the container with no prior installation needed. We will explore today uh, what is that LXC, how it works, and how it compares to the virtual machines. So let's first have a look at the major differences between VM and container creation process. I want to just quickly show you what the create VM options are, so we can see exactly how very different these available options are when we compare them then to create container options, and what is the reason for that, why these options differ a lot. But it's also worth to mention that uh, I'm using my Proxmox server here, yes? But you have to be aware that those virtual machines and LXC containers are not Proxmox specific things, they are Linux things. So you can run VMs and LXC containers on any Linux operating system. For example, to create LXC container on Ubuntu, you'd have to install LXD, Linux daemon, and run a lot of commands in CLI. Well, here in Proxmox, that Proxmox gives us that nice little user interface where we can do the same with just a few clicks. That's why it's so much easier to see all those differences here on Proxmox than on any other operating system, really. And if you ever created virtual machine in Proxmox, then you should be familiar with all those options. I mean, like here, of course, you have to choose the virtual machine identifier, like maybe 245, and then use the ISO. Here, I also want you to note something. Look at the sizes of those ISO images. For example, Linux Mint, 3 gigabytes. Windows, 5 gigabytes. They are huge. So if I choose Linux Mint, let's say, I can then choose the guest operating system, if it's Linux, if it's Windows, if it's Solaris or other operating system. I mean, this one is Linux, yes. And if we go next, I'm not creating one, I'm just going through these options. That's what we should concentrate on here. I can choose different graphic cards. I can, div I can choose different machine types or BIOS even. I can choose, I have a choice of three here or SCSI controllers, blah, blah. If we go to disks again, I can choose what type of device I want to choose, etc. And then let's go to CPU as well. I can choose what type of CPU or how this CPU should be presented to this operating system, to, to that Linux Mint that I'm creating now. And I have again choice of many, many different CPU types, like AMD, as you can see, Intel, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I hope you know what I mean. It's Let's close this. It's not exactly what I wanted to show you. I want to show you how it differs from that create CT options. Create CT, I mean, here it's not big difference. Let's say 245, our identifier. I can choose hostname as well. I need to choose password. But then if we go next, it asks for template. And I don't know if I have any. I, I mean, yeah, I've got one. It's for Debian. But look at the size now. 126 meg. Remember, the ISO was 5 gig for Windows or 3 gig for Linux. Here we've got Debian, so it's also Linux operating system, but the template has just 126 meg in size. But we will go back to those templates, so don't worry too much about it now. Let's go further. Disks. Not much choice again. And <laughs> the storage is already chosen for me, and I can only change the disk size. Maybe, well, right, maybe I will change it to 50, but that's basically all I have here. I can't choose if it's IDE or SCSI or whatever. So let's go next. And now I've got CPU, look at that. I only have the choice of how many cores I want to assign to this container. But I can't choose if it's Intel, AMD or any other processor. And memory again. I can only choose the amount of memory and the swap. So if I go next, just some basic, uh, you know, networking stuff. And then I just go next, next, finish. And that's it. Look at that. It took what? Two seconds? It says tasks okay, task okay. And if I click on it, I can just start it. That's job done. My LXC container is up and running. I can see already CPU usage. But if you did the same with the virtual machine, that would be the point where you would start your installation. Here we didn't install anything. All right, so let's just go back, okay? Let me exit that. So what's going on here? 
If I go here first to these CT templates, as I said, it's just 126 meg. Why is this CT template so much smaller than Virtual Machine ISO? It's because this container template is mostly consisting of just basic user space. And I know it might not tell you much at this stage, so to explain that better, let's break my current Proxmox machine into three main separate components. Like, I mean, this is the main Proxmox server, yes? And what are the three main separate components that make it work in the first place? The first component is the hardware. It's pretty obvious, because you have to install Proxmox on something. You need a motherboard, you need a CPU, memory, hard disk, some network interface card, etc. So any mini PC, laptop or personal computer will do just fine. And if you're not sure how to install Proxmox on them, then I have a video that takes you step by step through the Proxmox installation process. But anyways, what that Proxmox installer does, it first installs so-called Linux kernel. And the Linux kernel is a component that knows how to talk directly to that processor, memory or hard disk. So if I go here to boot, under the root directory, if I run lsla, I can see this is actually my Linux kernel. I mean my Proxmox runs on this Linux kernel. You can also run command uname r, which basically shows you the same information. 6812, 6812 PVE. And the interesting thing, you can run apt search Proxmox kernel. This, this command, will show you all available kernels for this Proxmox. And it's loads and loads of kernels, as you can see. I can scroll up and up, <laughs> many, many different kernels to choose from. Because kernel is something I can replace, I can install different kernel. But the thing is, you are not able to talk to that kernel, kernel directly. By default, the kernel doesn't even do anything. Kernel is not something for us users to play with. The only thing you can actually do is to install different version of kernel. And that's very important component. This kernel was first created and released by Linus Torvalds in 1991, so nearly 35 years ago, but it's basically still the same project that was originally created by Linus. I mean, yeah, of course, it grew in size a lot since then, <laughs> and a lot of new things were added, but basically, Linux kernel is one constant specific project, and its major focus is just to be able to talk to the computer components. But you might ask, if users cannot talk to, uh, to this kernel directly, then how we can interact with our computer? And the thing is, users, we have to use so-called user space. This is the third major component installed during Proxmox installation. And user space includes, for example, a file system. So if I go to root folder, let's say, if I run lsla, all those folders you can hear, you can see here, they are actually part of that user space. And then if I go to maybe bin, and I run the same command here, what you will find here, you will find all the commands that we can run on this system. I can scroll up, you can see it's loads and loads of them, like wget, or word count, or watch, or who am I. All those commands are here in this forward slash bin directory. Basically, what is in this folder dictates what I can run as a user in my command line interface. And even this shell, this command line interface, is also part of user space. This is how I interact right now with my Proxmox. And if I run echo uh, shell, I can see that I currently run bash shell. But that's not the only shell available, there are many other shells available. But what I mean, it's simply part of user space as well. The fact that I can run commands here, this is because I have this shell available. And also, if you have a desktop version of Linux operating system, then your user space will also have a graphical user interface that you can use to interact with your computer. Like, I mean, <laughs> currently I am on my Ubuntu and I have graphical user interface here, yes? So I can also just click, you know, buttons on my mouse and basically I run kind of like shell, but from, from this point, from graphical user interface. But what's important here is that during installation, Proxmox created this entire user space that I can now use with all those folders, all programs, all commands, and all that stuff, so I can now communicate with my server. And I can type some crap here, like uh, who am I maybe, was one of the commands available here, yes? And it says I am root. 
But the fact is, my shell does not know how to speak to the CPU or hard drive directly. All the shell does is simply sending so-called system calls to the kernel. And kernel has an API, which is kind of like a little entry point for this user space, for this shell that is in inside user space. And kernel can read then whatever crap I typed here. And it can take that information and translate it to the low level instructions that a CPU or memory or hard drive can actually understand. And that's basically a very rough overview of how computer works process. But going back to that user space, in fact, Proxmox runs on Debian Linux distribution. So basically, if you compared Proxmox user space to native Debian user space, you wouldn't find many differences. The main difference would be that you have uh, some Proxmox specific files that were added to this user space. If we go to Etsy, I mean, that's a lot of stuff, but if we go to PVE, this PVE folder and all those files that we can see here, these are Proxmox specific files. That means you will not find these files on any other Debian, or in fact, you will not find them on any other Linux distribution, not only Debian. This is kind of Proxmox specific user space that was created here. And these user spaces will differ between different Linux distributions because user space belonged to completely different independent project. That project was called GNU. And over time, many people had their own idea what an operating system should look like, what folders should be included in the file system, and what it should basically generally look like from user perspective. So they started creating their own user spaces. That's why we ended up with not just one Linux distribution, but countless of them. I mean, like, if you take Alpine Linux, it will have a different file system, different tools, different commands available than, let's say, CentOS or Ubuntu or Linux Mint. But there is one very important element. The kernel used in all of them will be the same. And sometimes you might hear the term that the kernel is interchangeable. That means that you can swap one kernel with another and your Linux distribution will still work fine because the kernel is one ongoing project and all Linux operating systems will use the same kernel family. I think some of you might say, Marek, it's not entirely true. And I know I'm oversimplifying some stuff here while going along, but I just want you to know that I'm aware of that, because, for example, pro processor architecture needs too much. And there is different kernel family for ARM processors and different for x86. But uh, I don't want this video to be like 35 hours long. And this is just rough overview, because what we have to concentrate on today are LXC containers. And let's go back to that main topic then. What is that LXC container? What is that template? The LXC container is simply a new user space that you downloaded as a template, because that template is mainly just a user space, so file system and some binaries and uh, basically some folders and files, and you can apply that template to your running Proxmox server. And all the hardware components stay exactly the same as Proxmox can see them, you know. We don't change any CPUs or memories or hard drives, as you could see. And in fact, LXC will also use the same kernel. This Proxmox kernel will be shared with this new LXC container. So that LXC template that you download in Proxmox is only a simple file system with some applications that are run by kernel as kind of a separate entity. Because Linux kernel has some interesting features, like uh, C groups or namespaces, and it can use them to isolate the container from your Proxmox server. And Linux kernel can also control the resources that are assigned to that LXC container. That's why we could choose how many CPU uh, cores we want to allocate to container or how much uh, disk space we want to allocate to it. But we couldn't change the type of the processor, for example, because there is no virtualization involved. We basically use the same components as Proxmox does. And when you configure and start your LXC container, you don't have to install anything because there is nothing to install. <laughs> As already mentioned, the hardware stays the same, the hardware drivers are already running in the kernel, and what kernel does, it simply just starts some services in that LXC. So there is not even a proper boot process involved. Kernel simply starts or stops some services. That's it. The advantage of that is that the LXC containers are very lightweight for the system, because it's just another user space that Linux kernel has to control. 
But this advantage is that all those templates you can apply, they have to be Linux kernel based templates. If we go back, if I go to CD templates and I, ch uh, and I search for new templates, what you will see here is you can, uh, we run Debian, but we also have Ubuntu, Fedora, Alpine Linux, Arch Linux, etc. Yes, there is quite a few of them, but they are all Linux based templates. And you will only find those Linux distributions because the template has to match current available kernel that is already running in Proxmox. And this is very different than when you create a virtual machine. Because when Proxmox creates a virtual machine, you have to go through the installation process because Proxmox will virtualize the hardware first. So the system will think it has separate CPU, separate disk, separate memory modules, etc. And then the system will also create its own kernel and its own user space. So the disadvantage is obvious. There is a lot of more resources needed to run the virtual machine, but advantage of that is also obvious, because you are not limited to Linux operating systems then. You still can run Linux as a virtual machine, but you can also run Windows, you can run FreeBSD, Solaris, or any operating system you want, really. Because you create separate hardware, which is virtualized, and the installer will create its own kernel. So that limitation is gone. Remember to join our Automation Avenue platform, where you can learn more about Linux, about uh, containers, but also about programming, cloud, Proxmox itself, databases, and many, many more like IT-related stuff. That's all I wanted to say today, so I just hope it was helpful and thank you for watching.